Hey, this is Cream. I sing and I scream for the band Fallstar. And I'm Brian, and I play bass in Fallstar. So we wanted to take some time to go over um, what our songs mean. A lot of things we say are like really um, violent or brutal or harsh, and they are. But we want to give some context to the things we're saying. Um, a lot of things were left unclear uh, for, to encourage like a lot of critical thinking. Um, we feel like that's something that us humans in general just really need. It's really easy to follow and take a lot of easy answers. There's a lot going on in the world and like a lot of really exciting stuff happening. It's a, it's a great time to be alive. So we just believe we're part of something that's way bigger than us and we want to encourage you guys to like um, keep your eyes and ears open. So the song starts out um, with the verse and it says, I felt the spirit like a dragon pouring out my mouth. I let the words burst off my tongue and then he blessed them. And so what I was trying to say there is like, sometimes when you're talking, um, like the Holy Spirit takes over when we're speaking. And if we let the Holy Spirit move and if we have a good relationship with him, like he'll collaborate with us in uh, what we're trying to say. And so I imagined like uh, freaking Gandalf when he like blows a ship out of his pipe and I was like, I feel like that's kind of how, how it looks to be talking in the spirit sometimes. I don't know, maybe that sounds weird, but that's what I envision. You just have to talk, and then God blesses what you say. It's like the foolish things will shame the wise. Like, it's God moving, so if we're making an effort, and if we're really in touch with his spirit, like, he's going to take those words and bless them. And then it goes, kingdom come, your will be done. Iconoclast grind stained glass windows to powder. So saying right there, like, we're waiting for God's kingdom to come. We want his will to be done. Um, and then iconoclast. Iconoclasm is like a, <clears throat> a movement. It was happening in, like, the 7th century, but it happened through pretty much all of history. It's um, where you're defacing, like, religious or political icons. So a lot of the religious reason for iconoclasm is like to deface a face of like Jesus. Like let's say you have a statue of Jesus. Like you're breaking off the face of that because you're saying like, like you can't pigeonhole God. Like you can't say what his image looks like, you know. That's the idea behind it. And so what I'm saying, iconoclast grind stained glass windows to power, powder. I'm talking about like Jesus. Like Jesus is the ultimate iconoclast. He takes our perceptions of himself and he just recreates them all the time. Like we think we know God, but he's so big. And so Jesus is gonna be like, ah, yeah, I'm like that. But I'm gonna show you how it really is. And he's doing that our whole lives. Like God's huge, like he can do that. And so I'm saying Jesus is the ultimate iconoclast. I'll steal, I'll kill, I'll bleed and travail. I'll always fail you, fail you. We walk in grace, it's how we live, but we can't understand, it's how we live. Um, just talking about the struggle, like um, trying to be good and failing over and over, like we all know what that's like. Jesus paid for what we've done and, and paid for our lives and we don't have to feel guilty about this stuff. And We're just always struggling to understand grace. So for the chorus of the song, it can get kind of confusing, so I'll just say the whole thing. This is our prayer for the new world and its midnight suns. Every shallow believer, every prophet, every seer. What we're talking about right there is two ideologies of how what the new world is going to be. Um, the first one I heard just this year um, on NPR, and then my pastor talked about this idea later. We go to Solid Rock Church in Portland, and um, <clears throat> I thought it was interesting, but it's, it's the idea that the church collaborates with the Holy Spirit and we bring the kingdom of God to earth. Creation is reconciled to God and then Jesus comes. So that's an interesting idea. And I think as Christians, like if we're striving towards something, it's it's bringing the kingdom of God to earth. And it, it just brings movement to the church and to, to like what we believe. So I love that thought. Um, there's the other thought of the new world order, which is all these secret societies and, um, you know, we all know like Freemasons, Illuminati, um, Bilderberger, Skull and Bones, like all these people who are trying to run the world um, as they think it should be run. And a lot of those ideals are just like really wrong, pretty evil. And, um, you know, we don't know how it exists, like in what form, but we know that there is something like that going on. It's good versus evil, you know, and, and this is our prayer for the new world. So we're hoping for the new earth, the new heaven and new earth. And this is also our prayer for the new world, like the new world that these people want to bring. Um, it's our prayer for them, like that they would know the true God and that they would understand like what's really going on here, like how that's going to fail and Jesus is going to come and 
um, make all things new and right. <clears throat> so Midnight Suns is talking about those who gather in the dark, you know, um, plotting nation against nation. One nation to share a song with all of creation, one nation to put our trust and our hope in the blood of God. Um, not talking about the USA, <laughs> so, sorry. Not even talking about Australia, because you guys are cooler than us. It's this, pretty much just this peace declaration um, found in this book by Leo Tolstoy, The Kingdom of God is Within You. And I think it puts this idea like the best, so I'm just gonna read this part of the book. We do not acknowledge alliance to any human government. We recognize but one king and one lawgiver, one judge and ruler of mankind. Our country is the world, our countrymen are all mankind. We love the land of our nativity only as we love all other lands. The interests and rights of American citizens are not dearer to us than those of the whole human race. Hence, we can allow no appeal to patriotism to revenge any national insult or injury. So, the one nation, we're talking about like, the people of God, man, like, there's no borders, no countries, like one nation to share a song with all of creation. Creation cries out in worship of God, like who made them. And so we're saying like, we just desire that all mankind could share in this song that creation's already singing. The next verse is saying, uh, <clears throat> opening my eyes to see my lust for justice, opening my eyes to see addiction to conquest, lust for justice, hoping that you you pay for the sins that you've done, the wrongs that you do. If someone murders someone else, we want their blood. Like, we want to blame them. And um, what Jesus is saying in all his writings is like, you don't, you don't deserve, you, you have no right to this lust for justice anymore. Like, Jesus satisfied justice on the cross. So we can't say like any revenge, anything like that, anything, any wrong someone does to us, like we have no right to to want that evil redone to them. The lust for justice, like it should be gone. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, that's over, man. Opening my eyes to see addiction to conquest, um, I see it in in the way our nations run against each other, like addiction to conquest, conquering other things. But what I'm writing about is like <clears throat> addiction to conquest. Dudes want to conquer every girl and have sex with every girl or look at as many naked women as possible. It's in our nature to, to conquer. Like we want to get enough money to get this or you know, we want to collect and collect and and so like we have these things wired into our in the way we're bent to have this lust for justice, lust to addiction to conquest. And Jesus opened my eyes to see how we we pursue these things. And it's good, he does that. Like he'll show us. Just keep asking the Holy Spirit to show you truth. Um, the bridge says, I will avenge, I will repay. Um, I'll stand down willingly. So saying Jesus will avenge, will repay. How did he avenge the sins? put against him and against us. He died on the cross and he showed mercy. Um, we can argue about that all day, but that's what happened. So that song, Shallow Believer, um, those are the lyrics, and I hope that provides some insight. You can always message us on Facebook and we're quick to get back to you. Anything else? We are signed to Face Down Records. We're super stoked. We're also still working with Come and Live. Um, we're just, it's not the same fashion, so we're still with like discipleship and mentoring um, with Come and Live. We love those dudes too. Um, thank you guys for the support. Hope you enjoy the song.